I'm Aki Martinson. Come along as I use an Arduino and a four-button remote to treat the neighborhood kids to some high-tech Halloween tricks. <laughs> I'm surrounded by people who love Halloween, like my sister, and even more so, my father. I sometimes make props or decorations for them to use. My dad especially loves to scare the kids that come to his door, so this year I'm building him some remote control special effects. I bought a four button radio transmitter and receiver from Adafruit. When you press each button, a different pin on the receiver should go high. We'll test it with LEDs. Now four buttons means I need to come up with four scares. First, we'll do a simple sound effect using this little board, also from Metafruit. It stores WAVE or MP3 files in onboard flash memory and plays them when you trigger one of its inputs. I'm soldering two rows of pins onto the PCB so I can use this on a breadboard. I could hunt around for some royalty-free sound effects, or I could do this. <laughs> This device has a micro USB port on it and acts like any other USB storage device. Just plug it in and copy over a sound file with a name corresponding to the trigger pin you want to use, in this case t00.wave. Now let's make this work on the breadboard. I'm sending the outputs from the radio receiver to an Arduino Uno and using it to drive the various effects. Oops, it keeps triggering all the time. See the red light? I'll fix the code running on the Arduino. There we go. Now to hook up a stereo mini jack and some speakers. Never gets old. That's one gag down. Now for the next one. I have this two relay board from Amazon. You can control it with the digital outputs from the Arduino. That gives us a way to drive two more effects as long as those effects are nothing but on and off. My dad has a cheap fog machine that comes with a wired remote control. That remote is just a switch and a ready light, so it's easy to build your own controller. It connects to the fog machine with an IEC C13 style connector. More on that later, but for now I'm soldering one of those connectors to some wires so I can hook it up to the relay. That works well. Now for something a little more interesting. This is a 12 volt DC gear motor, also from Amazon. You can get these with a variety of gear ratios. This one outputs 300 RPM. I've 3D printed a spool that accepts fishing line. The diameter of this, combined with the speed of the motor, determines how fast the line goes. The trade-off is torque, don't forget, but in this case I'm lifting something very lightweight, this fantastic posable spider that I picked up at the supermarket. My parents' house features a kind of high roof over the entryway, a perfect place for the spider to get the drop on the kids from. Before getting started on the fourth gag, I'll spend some time moving from a breadboard to a more permanent setup. I'm going to have three main boards inside an enclosure. 
the Arduino, the relay board, and a piece of perf board that will carry the radio receiver, the sound effects module, and a DC motor driver to power the spool gear motor. Here's an enclosure I made on the 3D printer. You can tell I don't have PETG exactly dialed in on this machine since there was significant lifting of the corners, but it'll do. And now for the last scare. This is a 12 volt DC motor with an offset weight on it. When that unbalanced load starts spinning, the motor and anything attached to it will vibrate. I 3D printed a little clamp to hold on to it. Now for this next gag, I needed uh, a prop to fit it into. This is what I got at Party City. And on a chain. Look at this thing. It's gruesome. I need to thread a pair of thin wires along the chain, through the hook, and into the hand where the motor will be. I'll power that with the other relay. It's time for your operation. Off camera, I put two screws through the palm of the hand into the motor block. I'm not entirely relying on hot glue here. Then, after soldering these wires to the motor, I glued the lid shut. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's pretty horrible. And now for something truly scary. A lesson in electrical safety. You see, the back of this fog machine has a female IEC mains connector on it for the remote control interface. That's good because if you take your typical power cable from your computer, you can't plug it in here. So you can't introduce power to the remote control interface. And depending on what's inside here, it could be bad if you did that. For that reason, I probably should have put a female connector here also and used a male-to-male -male cable to connect the two. But all I had was male connectors, they're much more common, and female-to-male -male cables like this one. What I really should have done is put a female connector here and gotten a male-to-male -male cable. So don't do it like I just did it. Now to button this up and head to my dad's house for the installation. Off camera, I mounted the controller and the winch on this 2x6. The winch in particular relies only on its own mass to keep it planted, so I wanted something I could weigh down with a brick if necessary. I'm setting up everything under this convenient bench. Next I'll connect this hand on a chain thing. I'll be honest, it's a bit lame. Too much noise, not enough motion. Definitely something to improve if I ever revisit this.
Finally, it's time to hang up the spider. Definitely the best gag here. And that's a bit of Halloween fun set up for remote control. See you all next year. Ah!